Hi, honeys. It's Michelle with Books Cause Insomnia. I'm here on the floor in front of a wall because I'm doing my entire TBR stack, which is insane. I haven't even counted how many books it is yet. I'll figure it out and get to that at the end of the video. But it's just too many books to pile up in front of the bookshelf that I'm sitting in front of when I film usually. So I decided to slide on over here. What I'm going to do is separate this into different categories because it's going to be a long video. And if you only want to see one category, well, it's a little easier to do timestamps and split it up for you that way. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any of the books that I plan on rereading, which, yeah, they're technically on my TBR stack, but I don't know if that really counts when it's a reread, right? So these are all the books on my TBR stack that I have not read yet, but ones that I plan on reading. I also have some books that are for a future library or that are really old and collectible that I don't plan on actually reading those copies. So I'm not going to mention those ones, but just wanted to kind of tell you my TBR rules before I got started. I'm going to separate this into nonfiction, classics, Cozy Mysteries, Mysteries That Aren't Cozy Mysteries, Horror, and then everything else, which is just a fiction section. This is going to be a long video. Get something to drink, sit back and relax, or if you're cleaning, go ahead and put your gloves on. You're not going to have to take them off anytime soon because this will be a nice long video that you can just clean all the way through. That's, part, that's usually what I do with longer videos. I just clean. I'm starting with nonfiction. The first book I have here is Let's Just Say It Wasn't Pretty by, by, by Diane Keaton. And this is her memoir. You know, a lot of memoirs have pictures. I'm not seeing any pictures in here to show you. This is not her only memoir. She wrote one other one. It was published in 2014. I think I found this one on a clearance rack at Barnes and Noble or something. She talks about being beautiful. And then she also talks about her romantic encounters with men like Warren Beatty, Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino, and Sam Shepard. See, why couldn't I have had her life when I was single? Like the guys I dated before I met my husband or nothing to write home about, but those guys sound pretty exciting. Maybe they weren't though. I'll find out when I read the book. <laughs> and then I've got You Are a Complete Disappointment by Mike Edison. It talks about, it's a memoir about failed expectations. It says, on his deathbed, Mike Edison's father was having a hard time speaking. He waved his son closer. I'm glad you're here, he began. There's something I want to tell you. You are a failure. You are broken and need to be fixed. You aren't as smart as you think you are, he hacked. And he added, after taking a moment to catch his breath, you are the only person in this family who is fat. <laughs> so it says Edison grew up in New Jersey in the 70s and 80s, and he takes us on a warped suburban odyssey that pulls no punches. Abysmal family dinners, terrified parents, and Jewish guilt are just the beginning of an adolescence forged in equal parts of self-exploration and needless doubt. For anyone who's ever suffered from withering criticism or perverse expectations, Edison provides solace and lots of laughs. So I think that sounds very good. And I think all of us felt like there was expectations on us growing up, right? Or maybe it was just me. I don't know. I felt like I had a lot of expectations. <laughs> It's a whole other video, but I think that this will be a really good read. Then we've got The Mockingbird Next Door. This is, it's called Life with Harper Lee by Maria Mills. The author interviewed Harper Lee's neighbor who had been lifelong friends with her. And that's what this book is about. Um, so it talks about Lee's life in Alabama and 
a reflection on their upbringing, their corner of the Deep South, and how To Kill a Mockingbird affected all of their lives. I thought that sounded good. I found it at the Dollar Tree, so if I don't like it, who cares, right? I didn't lose a lot of money or anything. Then I've got this book here, Influencer, Building Your Personal Brand in the Age of Social Media by Brittany Hennessy. I bought this and one other book when I was about to start doing YouTube um, on my main page over two years ago. Never read either book. <laughs> so I don't know if they would have helped me or not. I still plan on reading them eventually, but I just haven't read them yet. The other one's called Girl Boss, now a Netflix original series by Sophia Amoruso, founder of Nasty Gal. I know nothing about her or the show, but I guess I was on kind of a mission that day to, you know, take on the world. <laughs> then I've got this book, When Elephants Weep, The Emotional Lives of Animals. And when I originally posted a video on my main channel before I got this channel going, uh, a lot of people said they thought this book would be too emotional to read. But I plan on reading it. It's about... Proof that animals do have emotions and feelings and do experience love. It's based on scientific studies and anecdote-filled field notes of scores of biologists, ethologists, animal trainers, and animal behaviorists. This or extraordinary book, at once heart-rending, impeccably researched and compulsively readable, shows how deeply animals in the wild or in captivity experience emotions including elephants who weep with tears that wrench our hearts. And I got that book at, there was a rare bookstore that was going out of business, but not all the books in there were rare. And I found that one there, which I'd never heard of it. So maybe it is a more rare book. I don't know. I've got Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. I've heard this is actually pretty good. I definitely look forward to hearing what she has to say about behind the scenes with Gilmore Girls, Parenthood, and Bad Santa. <laughs> That's probably my favorite performance of hers is Bad Santa. <laughs> Can You Ever Forgive Me by Lee Israel. I don't know. I saw this movie and really liked it, actually. It's about a woman who is desperate to write a bestseller. So she forges all these historical letters and sells them and then finally gets caught. It's a short book. It looks like something I could read very quickly. Let's see. It's 127 pages long. I really liked the movie though. And at this point, I feel like I forgot enough about the movie to where I probably would really be able to enjoy the book. It was published in 2008. And it does have a few of the letters that she forged in the book. I found that at the Dollar Tree as well. Get, ha Get Happy, The Life of Judy Garland. I also got this book. Oh, no, I didn't. I was going to get this book at that rare bookstore that was going out of business, but it was really expensive. And I found it at the Goodwill for like $2, so I got it there instead. Now, the, the spine is broken on this, so I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it, but I am so excited about reading this book. I love Judy Garland. She's my favorite singer of all time. And it's kind of neat. Somebody took a magazine excerpt about this book and, and glued it in the front or taped it in the front, which I thought was really cool. And this one does have pictures and it's got deckled edges, you guys, which I love. Then I've got Educated by Tara Westover which most of you probably already know what this one is about, but I haven't read it yet, and I keep hearing that it's just absolutely wonderful. My First Five Husbands. So my favorite TV show of all time is The Golden Girls, and <laughs> I just thought this sounded really fun. It's probably more like a real-life telling of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I would think. I haven't read that book either, but I love Rue McClanahan, and I'm... So excited to read this. <laughs> this book was published in 2007. Gosh, look at how beautiful she was. I've got Gracious by Kelly Williams Brown. 
this is another person that a lot of people seem really familiar with, but I've never read anything of hers. I found it at the Dollar Tree and I thought, why not? I don't really even know what it's about though. <laughs> Moving on to classics. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Y'all know what that's about, right? A Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I try to get a lot of these kind of books that people find offensive when I see them because I want to read all the classics, even if they're offensive. I still want to read them, you know, and fully understand them and understand why they're offensive. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I confuse myself sometimes, so I don't know. But I do want to read this, and I never have. A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I'm not real sure what by Betty Smith. I'm not real sure what this is about, but I've heard it's really, really good. And I can't even look at this synopsis because there is no synopsis with this particular edition. This edition is a Reader's Digest edition from 1989. The book was published in 1943. I love this detail though, that they have the beginning of each chapter and then they have artwork throughout as well. I love when books have been given so much love and attention to detail though. I feel like this book is now considered a classic. The Life of Pi. I haven't read it. I'm not sure what it's about. If you, That's one thing I wanted to mention too. If you have read any of these, if you think I'll like them, let me know because I'll bump them up further on my TBR list because I've, I've got so many books now and I keep buying more and I can't help it. I have a problem. But it's a problem I don't want to solve. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to fix this. I... <laughs> kind of like being addicted to books. So I'm not going to go to like a book readers anonymous group because I love being an avid book reader, but I can't help it. I just want to surround myself with books and I want to read. And I've been that way since I was a little girl. I've always had a lot of books. This one I almost got rid of. It was on a, um, in a stack of books I was planning on getting rid of. And there's a couple, I did a video about it and a couple books in there people talked me out of getting rid of. And this one, I just, when I read the back of it, I, I feel like I have to keep it. I have to read it and see if I like it because I'm an art lover and it's got a lot to do with the art world. I just want to give it a chance. But The Golden Finch by Donna Tart. Let me know if you've read this. I have not watched the movie. I'm not going to because I want to, I want to read this eventually and then watch the movie. <laughs> 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And this one is about the rise and fall, birth and death of the mythical town of Macondo through the history of the Buenidia family. That sounds really good, doesn't it? And I've got this. Virginia Woolf by Mrs. Dalloway. And it, it's got a sticker on the front here that says Desert Industries. Desert Industries, I found out after moving to Vegas, was a very popular used bookstore that was here for decades. And it's, it's gone now, of course. So when I see this on a book, I'm not going to take it off. I'm going to leave the sticker on there for life because I think that's kind of cute that it came from this bookstore that people cherish so much. I don't know what Mrs. Dalloway is about, but I wanted to give this book a chance um, I read an article during the lockdown that Virginia Woolf's books were becoming kind of popular again and that they were helping calm people down during the pandemic. And I thought, really? Well, as somebody who struggles with anxiety, this might be something I really want to read or this author might be someone I really want to read. So I decided to go ahead and give her a chance. And when I saw a book of hers, on a clearance rack. I think it was at the uh, Goodwill. Why not? Why not grab it? Uh, it was published in 1925 and it's 194 pages. Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I hear this is just an amazing book. I hear the movie's good too. Let me know if you've seen it or read it. 
But is this book not gorgeous? Look at this. I used to have a coffee, coffee and a classic membership. And this is one of the books that I got during that time. And I just, it's so beautiful. I'm so glad that I got it. I keep just trying to decide if I should go back to coffee and a classic or not. Let me know what you think. I always want your input. Betsy Tacy, uh, one of my viewers, Miss Shelley, sent this to me. This is a book that she loved as a little girl. I'm not going to read this one, though, because it was, the copyright was, let's see, 1940. And this is an original book. I don't want to hurt it by reading it, but it is so beautiful. And so I'm just going to buy like, you know, at a used bookstore somewhere, I'll buy, you know, a newer copy of this and not worry about beating it up. But isn't this gorgeous? And this is by Maud Hart Lovelace. The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, the first five novels. And I definitely plan on reading it. I just haven't got around to it yet. It's funny, around New Year's, I bought all these classics thinking I'd read one a month, and I think I've read one of them. <laughs> so these will last me a long time. Um, so this was not this edition, but the book was originally published in 1900. And the first book is like the movie that we've all seen, and then the rest go on from there. And I love reading about magical, creative worlds that are not like the world that we live in. Speaking of that, I also have Alice in Wonderland, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and other classic works by Lewis Carroll. I love this cover. I think it's so pretty. I love books that expand my imagination. And this was my favorite story as a child. I loved this movie. I had a record of it uh, that I listened to over and over again. And my husband says the book is better than the movie. So I feel like I have to read it eventually. Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I started reading this and it was good. I got to page 12 <laughs> and I stopped reading it. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just so whimsical and cheerful that I it was too much for me at the time. I, I, I was kind of in like a dark place at the time and I didn't want cheerful and whimsical. So I'm sure I'd be fine with it now. And I think this would be a really nice summer read. So I'll probably pick it up pretty soon and actually read it. Emma by Jane Austen. This is another one that I got from coffee and a classic. I started to read this. I've always wanted to be a voice actress. And that was actually why I originally started YouTube. I, when I originally, originally started, I had a page where I was reading books to children in an effort to help teach them how to read. And with all the different rules that came out and different laws, that page, I really couldn't justify making videos for it anymore. It's still up, but I don't actively make those videos anymore. And for a while, I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to do a book on tape kind of thing, but on video on YouTube as a way to hopefully get my voice out there and maybe get recognized or something. And like nobody watched it, but I read the first few chapters of this um, on my other page. And where did I get? I got to page 68 when I stopped. But it was so good at that point. I definitely want to finish rereading it. But it was kind of fun to be rereading it for the first time while trying to do a book on tape kind of thing, like an audiobook situation. It was kind of fun. I just did a video last week of my July TBR books. None of those books are in this video because I'm hoping that I actually read them. And I didn't want to keep mentioning the same books over and over again. If you're interested in that, I will link it at the end of this video and you're more than welcome to go and watch that as well. But I just wanted to mention that because you might be thinking, wait a minute, she didn't mention any of the books that she did in her July TBR. Yeah, there's a reason for that. 
The next category I'm going to do is horror. The Lucky Ones by Tiffany Rice. Rise. Okay. Part mystery, part gothic suspense, an atmospheric and provocative tale of love, lies, and the secrets a family keeps. Dean Kuntz, The Intensity. I used to read him all the time. All the time. Like every book he came out with, I read for years. And then I went through a reading slump in college where I just kind of stopped pleasure reading. I'm sure that happens to a lot of people, right? And then I never went back to reading his books. And there's no reason. I still love him. I just forgot about it. picking up his books. I know. And I saw this book at a used bookstore that is near me, and I, I had to get it. I thought, you know what? I'm ready to read some more Dane Coons. So I think this will be really good for the fall. That's kind of what I'm holding out for, is just to, to start reading it when it starts cooling off a little bit. A little bit of Dean Coons in my life again. The Shattering by Kimberly McCrate. This is the second book in a series called The Outliers, and I saw it at the Dollar Tree and thought, why not pick it up? Wiley may have escaped the camp in Maine, but she is far from safe. With it being the second in a series, it's hard to really say what it's about, but I have to read it and find out, I guess. But hopefully there's enough set up in this to where I won't miss not having read the first book. Now we've got Mysteries. The White Magic Five and Dime by Steve Hawkinsmith with Lisa Falco. It's a tarot mystery. I know nothing about this book. Um, I had just joined, oh, it's got a bunch of imagery in here of tarot cards and stuff. I had just joined a book club out here in Vegas when the virus hit. And this was my next book in line to read when everything went down. And I had ordered this book to meet with the group and it showed up after the meeting. So I couldn't even read it before the meeting. And then the virus outbreak happened and we all went in lockdown. And we are just now finally going to meet again in August. <laughs> this book has long since been forgot it's been at the bottom of my TBR stack <laughs> ever since because it wasn't a book that I probably would have picked out to read but because it was the book club's book for that month I, I went ahead and got it after going to Burdash to claim her inheritance Alanis is drawn into the mystery around her mother's death did one of Barbara's customers finally get wise to her con artist ways and take revenge Alanis thinks she knows how to find out. She'll make those customers her own until she can find the killer. Alanis McClan, cynic and unbeliever, is about to become a tarot card reader. With a little help from her mother's teenage apprentice and a snarky tarot how-to book called Infinite Reads Roads to Knowing, <laughs> sorry, Alanis begins bluffing her way through phony reading. But the more she gets to know the cards, the more she sees real meaning in them. And the closer the murderer comes to making her the next victim. So that actually sounds pretty good. A Gathering in Hope by Philip Gully. I read one of his other books. I had found it at the Dollar Tree. Not this one. One of his other books. And I loved it. So I decided to go ahead and read more of them. He is a Christian author. And he writes mysteries about... Um, Things that take place in this town called Hope. And that's what it's about. <laughs> or what the series is about. So this is um, one of the other books in that series. And I thought it'd be fun to read it. I've got Ag Agatha Christie, The Tuesday Club Murders. And I've also got her book, Three Blind Mice and Other Stories. Now, I have read a little bit of Agatha Christie since then, and I'm not as excited about her writing as I thought I would be. 
but it doesn't mean that I don't want to read them. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes and the Moonstone's Curse by Sam Sisliano. This is kind of interesting. I found this at the Dollar Tree, and this author, he takes classic stories, and he also takes classic characters, and he molds them together into new books and new stories. I thought, why not give it a shot? And then this one, I also found at the Dollar Tree, and I love this cover, by the way. It's a hard case crime book which I, I feel like I've seen, um, yeah, Stephen King's newest books have been hard case crime books. And I really liked his book later. So I thought, why not give this a chance? It's called 20 Year Death Malnevo Prison by Ariel S. Winter. And she has written three books. One takes place in 1931, one 1941, and one 1951. The body found in the gutter in France led the police inspector to the dead man's beautiful daughter and her hot-tempered American husband. So this is a breathtaking first novel written in the form of three separate crime novels that can be read in any order because they're each set in a different decade and penned in the style of a different giant of the mystery genre which I thought sounded kind of fun. I think life is all about mystery and adventure and having fun. So why not read books like that that just sound totally different and like kind of wacky? Up next, Cozy Mysteries. Gone with the Groom. Now you might want to watch <laughs> another video I just put out recently is a book. Um, it's a Cozy Mystery book haul. And I'm any of the books that are in that video, I'm not going to talk at length about here because I already did in that video. I don't want to be redundant and just keep repeating myself. So that was in this, this was in that video. <laughs> Can't talk. This is a long video. What do you want? <laughs> um, basically, there's a sleuth named Annie and her daughter is getting married and the groom disappears and she's trying to decide to find out what happened to him. Did something was foul play at hand or did he want to disappear kind of thing. Sheila Connolly's Buried in a Bog. It's a Cork County mystery, which I thought might be kind of fun. My family's from Cork. <laughs> and then there's two other books of hers there in the uh, Museum Mystery Series. I've got Fundraising the Dead and Dead End Street. I think cozy mystery books about museums are fun. Museums, libraries, that kind of thing. So that'll be really fun. And then, what else do I have here? I've got The Lady Who Broke All the Rules. Charlene Harris, I've got the first two books in her um, Harper I'm not, I'm not sure what the series is called, but it's the, the grave, um, series about the, it's about a lady that can sense if people are dead and if they are where their bodies are and how they died. So that sounds kind of exciting. I loved her Lily Bard series. And, um, so I've got the first two books in this series and then the first two books in the Aurora Tea Garden series. I'm planning on reading both of those series and then after that I'll do the Sookie Stackhouse series. But that's kind of the method of my madness right now. So right now I'm about to start the Grave series and then after that Aurora Tea Garden and then after that Sookie Stackhouse. But I just love Charlene Harris. I'm not, you can't convince me to not love her. <laughs> not that anybody's trying, but I just think she's amazing. Then I've got Book, Line, and Sinker, which is the uh, first book, I think, or is it the second, in a Library Lovers Mystery series. Book, Line, and Sinker. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the third book. It's hard sometimes trying to read books that are out of print because you can't always get the first one where you're looking. So sometimes I have to kind of um, 
buy buy them in different order and then kind of slowly piece it all together kind of thing. It's kind of crazy, but like the Aurora Tea Garden series. I couldn't find the first one, so I had the second one, and then I just now found the first one. So now I can start reading it whenever I want. But Then I've got two books by Lucy Burdett. I've got uh, Murder with Ganache and Death on the Menu. I think this one is her newest one. Let's see. And these are the Key West Food Critic Mystery Series books, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, this one, well, no, 2018. So no, this is the second to the last one. There's another one that's newer, but. And now for the fiction books. 12 Miles Straight by Eleanor Henderson. The setup is simple, two babies, one of them black and one of them white. But the story of how they came to be is one of the deepest and most nuanced experiences of our shared humanity that I've read in a long time. The characters are so vivid that you will feel as though they exist unbound by the pages of the book. The writing is so extraordinary, it will make your teeth ache. The story is so compelling that you may gasp out loud as I did, as the revelations unfold. There is no, this is no ordinary novel, but it is art of the highest order. And this one has deckled edges as well. I have to mention that. Decelerate Blue by Adam Rapp. In a hyperkinetic future, the ultimate act of rebellion is slowing down. So this will be the second graphic novel I'll have ever read. I've, I've read, my first one was uh, Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. And I found this at the Dollar Tree and it looked really good. So I decided to get that. And I, speaking of Rainbow, Rainbow Rowell, I've got two books of hers here. Um, I've got Fangirl, which I found at the Dollar Tree. Um, I really enjoyed Pumpkinhead, so I decided to give this one a read. And, ooh, that's pretty. Look at the imagery there on the inside. And then the second one I got, a friend of mine sent to me. It's called Landline. And then I've got a book here called The Ones. Cody and her boyfriend James have been randomly selected before birth to receive genetic engineering. Known as The Ones, they are 11, or sorry, 1% of the population who are healthy, beautiful, talented, and the rest of the world gets jealous. The chilling and frighteningly real the Ones leads us down a dark rabbit hole of scientific possibilities, fractured morality, and the brutal consequences that come from it. The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I read The Vanish... Is it called The Vanishing Half? I read The Vanishing Half and I loved it. It really moved me. It was... I had five favorite books of 2020 and that was one of the five. It was number two for me. And so I wanted to give this one a chance and see what I thought. I have no idea what it's about, but I thought, you know, sometimes if I love an author, I'll read what they write anyway. I don't even have to read what it's about. I just want to read their books. Little Green by Tish Cohen. Let's see. This book is um, a book about marital issues and whether or not a couple can work them out. I like reading books about marital problems. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> uh, the Mulberry Tree by Jude Devereaux. This one, it's, I got it for Romance-a-thon, which I did last month. And I didn't get around to reading it. But <laughs> basically this book is about a woman who has a husband that dies and finds out he's not who she thought he was. And she's trying to, uns you know, trying to solve what really happened as she's kind of losing everything in the process. And I guess she meets a man and that's all I know. <laughs> Great explanation, right? Then I've got the plus one by Sarah Archer. This book is about um, a woman that is a robotics engineer who's perpetually single. And she decides to bring a, man that she created to a wedding, her sister's wedding as her plus one, but she ends up falling in love with him. 
<laughs> it just sounded very wild and thought compelling. And I thought, I have to read this. <laughs> what could go wrong? You fall in love with a robot. Amy Tan, The Valley of Amazement. I love Amy Tan books, so I had to pick this up. It is... An evocative epic of two women's intertwined fates and their search for identity. From the lavish parlors of Shanghai courtesans to the fog-shrouded mountains of a remote Chinese village. And that's one of the things that I love about Amy Tan is that she goes into different times and places and the connection that women have with each other. And I love it. A tr uh, Troubling a Star by Madeline Langle. One of my favorite, favorite books of all time is A Ring of Endless Light. And it's actually a five-part series that Madeline Langle wrote about uh, the Austin family. And this is the fifth and last book in that series. I haven't read the first three. I don't even know if I will. <laughs> I just really wanted to read what came next in the main character's life. So that's why I got this one. But, oh, such a good book. Speaking of Madeline Langle, I got The 24 Days Before Christmas. I thought this would be cute to read around Christmas. Um, it's a Christmas story that she wrote. I think it's a children's book, but why not, right? I also got A Wrinkle in Time. I feel like... I didn't actually read this growing up, but yet everybody else did. So then I'm wondering, did I, did I read it? I don't know. So it might be a reread. It might not. But I know this is a beautiful book that people just say is amazing. It has the general appearance of being science fiction, but it is not. There is mystery, mysticism, a feeling of indefinable brooding horror. This book is the original or is original, different, and exciting. That's kind of how I feel about her books. They're supposed to be sci-fi, but they're so mystical and deep, kind of philosophical. That I, I just love them. She's She was such a good author. Fern Michaels' Payback. One of my viewers had recommended that I read the Sisterhood series that Fern Michaels wrote, and I saw this at my local used bookstore and decided to get it. It's about a group of women who call themselves the Sisterhood who solve crimes together. So I guess this m might be a mystery, although I always think of Fern Michaels as being a romance writer, so I wasn't sure which stack to put this in when I was going through the books that I was going to talk about in this video. <laughs> the Book of Essie by Megan McLean Ware. She's the star of this show, and her dad is a preacher. And at 17, she finds out she's pregnant. And apparently, the you-know-what hits the fan, and that's what this book is about. Searching for Sylvie Lee by Jean Kwok. I'm not sure how to say that name. I'm sorry if I slaughtered it. A wonderful portrait of an immigrant family life and one of the best unputdownable suspense novels I've read in a long time. Sounds really good. The Rumor by Ellen Hildebrand. This book is set in Nantucket following two best friends, Madeline and Grace, and the rumors plaguing their otherwise perfect lives. I thought this would be a good summer read. Maybe I should read this in August. The Revolution of Marina M. by Janet Fitch. St. Petersburg, New Year's Eve, 1916. Marina Makarova is a young woman of privilege who aches to feel free of the constraints of, of her genteel life, a life about to be upended by the vast forces of history. Swept up on these tides of great change, Marina will join the marches for workers' rights fall in love with a radical young poet, and betray everything she holds dear. 
before being betrayed in turn. As her country goes through almost unimaginable upheaval, Marina's own coming of age unfolds, marked by deep passion and devastating loss, and the private heroism of an ordinary woman living through extraordinary times. And this book is, let's see. Eight hundred pages long, so it's gonna take me a little while to read it. The reason I picked this up was it's a Janet Fitch book, which two of my favorite books of all time are *Paint It Black* and *White Oleander* by Janet Fitch. So I had to pick this up, right? I don't really have a choice. *The Art of Dancing in the Rain* by Garth Stein. This one is about a guy that's a competitive racer who has a dog who speaks. And it's supposed to be very heart-wrenching. And I keep putting off reading it because I don't know if I can handle heart-wrenching right now. I know there's a movie too, but I haven't seen it. I have another Amy Tan book, The Bonesetter's Daughter. And this book is an absorbing tale of the mother-daughter bond, which does anybody write about the mother-daughter bond the way Amy Tan does? Probably not. If you've read the Joy Luck Club, you know that she is really good at writing about the mother-daughter bond. I'll Take You There by Wally Lamb. And this book is about a film scholar who runs a Monday night movie club that was once a vaudeville theater. And while setting up film in the projectionist's booth, a ghost visits him of one of the actresses, I guess, and things ensue from there. <laughs> I don't know. It, it sounds pretty good, though, I think, from what I've heard about it. Um, I've also got this book here, How Lucky. This is a new release uh, that I just got from Book of the Month. By the way, if you're interested in signing up, I have a code down in the description box and you get a discount if you use my code and I get a free book. So if you want to feed my addiction, go right on ahead. I will not get mad. <laughs> but it's called How Lucky. And this one is about a man named Daniel who lives in Athens, Georgia. And he is wheelchair bound and there's a young woman who passes by frequently and he's become used to seeing her walk by. And one day he thinks that she's been kidnapped. And so this is a story about him trying to solve what happened to her. And I happen to love books like I love the rear window movie and the movie Disturbed. Disturbia, excuse me. And I, I love woman in the window and that kind of stuff. Like there's something about neighbors and like what you think their lives might be or what happened to them that I find really compelling. And I can't wait to read this. I think it sounds pretty good. Okay, I read Jane Eyre and, and then I read The Woman Upstairs. And I wanted to read this as well. One of my viewers recommended it called The Air Affair. And it's also it's kind of confusing what this one is about, but I'll give you more of an update after I read it. But it's inspired by Jane Eyre. I guess that's the easiest way to say it. And it's by Jasper Ford, by the way. Another Wally Lamb book. Uh, I know this much is true. And this one's about twins. I think one of them goes to jail or something. And that's all I know. But She's Come Undone is another one of my favorite books of all time, which he wrote. So that's why I wanted to pick this one up and uh, the other book that I saw of his because I just think She's Come Undone was so good. And I'm, I'm hoping that these books are wonderful as well. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, we're getting close. 
Norma by Sophie Oxenen. This book is about a woman's hair having magical powers, which sounds really amazing. At the Wolf's Table. I found this one at the Dollar Tree. Are you noticing a theme here? I get a lot of books at the Dollar Tree and the Goodwill and the used bookstore. <laughs> and Book of the Month. That's about where I get all my books, most places. By Rosella Costarino. And I'm going to read you the synopsis to this one because it's hard for me to shortly say what some books are about. Germany, 1943. 25-year-old Rosa Sauer's parents are gone, and her husband Gregor is far away, fighting on the front lines of World War II. Impoverished and alone, she makes the fateful decision to leave war-torn Berlin to live with her in-laws in the countryside, thinking she'll find refuge there. But one morning, the SS come to tell her that she has been conscripted to be one of Hitler's tasters two times a day. She and nine other women go to his secret headquarters, the Wolf's Lair, to eat his meals before he does. Forced to eat what might kill them, the tasters begin to divide into the fanatics, those loyal to Hitler, and the women like Rosa, who insist they aren't Nazis, even as they risk their lives every day for Hitler's. As secrets and resentments grow, this unlikely sisterhood reaches its own dramatic climax, as everyone begins to wonder if they are on the wrong side of history. And this is based on a true story, by the way. He actually did have people that ate his food for him so that he would know before he ate it if it was poisoned or not. I know. <laughs> Wizard of Oz and Other Narcissists. Well, this one is about coping with one-way relationships and work and love and family and if you have a narcissist in your life like I do, I think most of us probably have at least one, um, this might be worth reading. I don't know yet, but we'll find out. A Woman Is No Man by E. Tough Rum. Palestine, 1990. 17-year-old Isra prefers reading books to entertaining the suitors her father has chosen for her. Her desires are irrelevant, however. Over the course of a week, the naive and dreamy girl finds herself betrothed, then betrothed, then married, and soon living in Brooklyn. There, Isra struggles to adapt to the expectations of her oppressive mother-in-law, Farida, and her strange new husband, Adam, a pressure that intensifies as she begins to have children, four daughters instead of the sons Isra is expected to bear. Brooklyn, 2008. At her grandmother's insistence, 18-year-old Dea must meet with potential husbands. Though her only desire is to go to college, her grandmother is firm on the matter. However, the only way to secure a worthy future for Dea is through marriage to the right man. But fate has a will of its own, and soon Dea will find herself on an unexpected path that leads to shocking truths that will force her to question everything she thought she knew about her family, the past, and her own future. Set in America, at once foreign, so many staggeringly close at hand, A Woman Is No Man is a story of culture and honor, secrets and betrayals, love and violence. It is an intimate glimpse into a controlling and closed cultural world and a universal tale about family and the ways silence and shame can destroy those who have sworn to project to protect. That sounds really good too. A friend of mine sent that to me, so and I trust her taste. So if she thinks it's good, I'm sure I'll enjoy it as well. All right. We've got Wide Sargasso Sea by Jane Rye. And this book is another Jane Eyre book. But this one is written about Antoinette Causeway, the lady that's up in the attic in the book, the first wife. Of how, how, I mean, that sounds amazing to me because if you've read the book, you can't help but walk away wondering who the first wife is and what happened to her. 
So this is a book that somebody wrote. I think it's like a hundred years later they wrote this book. Just their thoughts and interpretation on who the first lady was and what happened to her and what her story was. But I thought that sounded really exciting as well. I'm kind of trying to explore as many things as I can about Jane Eyre. <laughs> and then the last book, the very last one, we're finally there. The Cafe on the Edge of the World, a story about the meaning of life by John Strzelecki. So basically a man in a cafe um, sees three questions on a menu. Three people he meets and discusses, and then and then he meets three people and discusses the meaning of life. It's been translated into 42 languages, so it must be pretty decent. I just counted. I have 76 books in my TBR stack. I think I need to get to reading it. Maybe slow down on buying books. I've been saying that for a long time and I have slowed down, but not enough apparently. 76 books? <laughs> There's people out there that don't even own 76 books. <sighs> so definitely please tell me if you've read any of these. Tell me if there's any you think I should read soon because I need some help. I need to get through these. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. I love you. Bye.